Are we live? Are we live? We certainly are live. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's kick things off. Welcome, 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 one and all, to In the Sun, season three, episode six. Obviously, uh, joining alongside me is my dear co host, Nuan Runnersinger. How's it going, buddy? How's your week been? Lots of crickets to cover as usual. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a good week. It's been a good week, Hasid. Uh, thought I'd maybe update you on the club cricket front. And uh, unfortunately, my team at the Devils Cricket Club has not been able to qualify for the uh, the semi finals. So my cricket season has come to an end, which means <laughs> uh, no more Tuesday and Thursday trainings for me. Thank goodness. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can now actually spend a Tuesday, uh, you know, <laughs> podcasting cricket with you. Um, instead of being up there with the boys uh, on a on a Tuesday, Arvo. But uh, that's the news from there. I think our I think our ones, twos, and threes have made it to the qualifying finals. So big week of finals at the end, uh, which is which is pretty exciting. Not for me though, but maybe next season. How about your club? Yeah, um, for us, I think um, yeah, same goes. So I captain the thirds for my club. Um, yeah, we had a pretty rough run. This season didn't make the semis. Um, I oh, no. get a vote count on Saturday. I um, I got the best and fairest for the team, so that was good. Little personal, oh, oh. Uh, little personal <laughs> achievements, and uh, we, I did happen to score the have... most runs for the team as well. And almost, we... I was one behind the most wickets for the season for my for my team. Goodness so. me, without a doubt, without a doubt, who who else could it be? <laughs> but with, but wickets, I never saw you as a bowler. I thought you were more of a like a hard hitting batter. I am genuine. All right, genuine. I'm genuine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, I was actually still bowling. Yeah, go on. I was um, I think I was in the top like um, seventeen or eighteen run getters in the uh in the compact for my for like our division for in the three. So um, no way. Yeah, didn't have the worst season, but um, you know, it was pretty tough. And uh, you asked me about my bowling, were you? Yeah, you still bowling those. You used to bowl mediums in indoor cricket, and then and you bowl, yeah. and he, he told me you're bowling off spin now. Like I don't know what's what's. Yeah, what's well, a, well, that's the thing, Nuan. When you you got to be malleable in these sorts of situations. <laughs> malleable. So. Ma- I'm flexible, pretty much the um my team's Andrew Simons, you know. Oh god, that's what that's I just, am. We need to the ball, now. Can ball mediums is, can hit a hard ball. You know, this is too much. This is too much. <laughs> Goodness me. Um, that's but awesome, yeah, I think dude. our our fifths uh, are playing semis this week as well yeah. as well actually our twos were very close i think yeah, they nice. needed the results of another team which just didn't go the way that we wanted to last that day so i think it's just the fifth yeah, yeah. fifth yeah. and the fourth sorry they're hitting yeah up. yeah okay but um All right. yeah interesting stuff man oh well, bad, yeah, luck to, bad luck to bad luck to both of us i guess but there's uh, yeah that's right yeah i think season. um yeah i, mean, I like I th- like i said earlier it was my first season captaining so i, I definitely learned a lot throughout this experience and hopefully yeah. uh I reckon next year, next year will be a, a way better year. I've definitely got the, you know, because like having to set up the cones and the stumps and everything like that, it's uh, it was all new because I didn't have any kind of yeah. experience. Normally, I just rock up like yeah, half yeah. an hour, 45 minutes before the game yeah. start. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll be ready to go. Yeah. But yeah. A couple of warm-ups, you know, before you see if all I'm the cones lucky. and the wickets all, yeah, all laid out magically. Like, how does this happen? Next exactly minute, right. You learn all about it. Exactly. Yeah. So um, that was interesting. But um, hmm. we do have a lot of cricket to cover. Uh, this Indeed. episode, um, yes. just want to touch on one. Um, we'll start off with the Bangladesh and England series, ODI yeah. series. Engl- uh, England just uh, finished up their test stints with uh, uh, New Zealand, New Zealand. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah, that, that went all right. And to come over to Bangladesh, I think most of the guys are, are not the they're not the same players that played test in ODI, but. They gave uh, Bangladesh yeah. a pretty good run for their money, winning the first two ODIs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the first mm. one was pretty close, but the second one was fairly comfortable. Yeah. Uh, but they did lose, mm. uh, actually, however, the third te- uh, third ODI um, yeah. with uh, by 50 runs, I believe. So I think yeah. um, I think Bangladesh are actually quite strong at home, just historically. I think England oh, yeah. are the only team that they've uh, that they've struggled with. Um, so it was good to see them get up yes. up and about. And Chucky Balhassan among the run getters last game as well. I think you had something to talk about with regards to that. Yeah, I just I, I saw on the Instagram um, a very special stat now for Shakib Al Hassan. He's only the third men's player after Sanad Jaisura and Shahid Afridi to have more than six thousand ODI runs and more than three uh, three hundred ODI wickets to his name. Mm-hmm. So uh, very special achievement. I guess it kind of highlights how much of a how much of a servant and how you know how influential yeah. he has been 
um, for Bangladesh cricket. I, I remember the early days of Shakib Al Hassan when we were in high school. I think mm. he first played for Bangladesh around 2006. So he's been there. He's been there for a bloody long time. I remember he played in the 2007 World Cup as well. Um, yeah. And he's still here today. So, so yeah, kudos to him. He's he's like the he's often uh, to me he's like the glue in this Bangladesh team. There's no Bangladesh without Shakib Al Hassan. And yeah. you can see why. <laughs> no, definitely. He's uh he's an absolute menace. And I remember back in those days, he would always be like the number one all rounder in the world in ODIs. It yeah. would just be him year after year after year, and no yeah. one really got close to him in terms of the ranking. No. So definitely amongst uh very, very good company with Jai Surya and yeah. uh and Shahid Afridi as well. So yeah. Um I think he's still had a couple of good years left in him as well. So yeah, you know, it's, oh, yeah. it's very good to see. I mean, look, Bangladesh are typically quite strong at home. Um, I don't know if you remember, there was a time where Bangladesh, they secured their first ever test victories against England and Australia at home. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember that by any chance? It was, I think it was like no, back in 20, 2016, 2017. It was very like under the radar. Like nobody, like the cricket world knew about it, but like it wasn't big news, but it should have been. Um, yep. Yeah, it, I think I think Bangladesh was like a 2-0 two, two test victory. 2-0. Two, two over mm -hmm. England in a test series at home. I mean, look, it was just it was just a massive spin fest. Like it was just spinning every single ball. Um, yeah, yeah. And England had no idea. And I think when Australia went there um, as well, they were defeated. I think that they were defeated one nil um, mm -hmm. as well. So you know, both of Bangladesh's big test match wins have come against when, when they've come against the big teams have typically been at home. But you know, just mm -hmm. like an Indian side, they really bank on their spinners um, yeah. to get them over the line. But you know, England being England, I mean, they've still managed to scalp this. Uh, you know scrape this ODI series over Bangladesh and you know once again I feel like you know the coverage for this series again it was like that it was like that weird Australia England ODI series in the middle of the you know the World Cup and then the test series starting like I don't know was there you know it didn't seem like there was much coverage about this and I guess it no, takes us yeah, back you're right. To, right and it takes us back mm. to that more existential conversation we had about um, the decline of ODI cricket and I think you know, the decline is only going to get further exacerbated by a series like this. You know, you just whack in three ODIs at random and then and then that's it. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's something that the ITC needs to look at. But certainly, um, you know, well done to England. Um, you know, once again, they're, they're showing the world why they're dominating in nearly every single part of the game right now. Yeah. And uh, come the they Ashes, really they're really down terrible. as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. very, very good side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look. Apart from that, I want to touch on um, the uh, the next test match with India and England. A lot of discussion here. Um, India, England, or India, Australia? India. What did I say? India, England. You said India, England. India, oh. uh, India, Australia. In Mate, India. You're watching. You're watching too much Women's Premier League up at three, four. A. Honestly, a. I'm watching. Cooked. I'm watching all kinds of highlights every day. I'm keeping up all kinds of scores. <laughs> India, Australia. Okay, so the yes. Uh, the third test, um, unfortunately, mm. Pat Cummins has been forced to fly home due to his yeah. his mother's not doing too well, um, so that's yeah. not good. And in his yeah. place, uh, mm. Cricket Australia have actually opted for Steve Smith to come back um, as yeah, captain. Wow. Now, yeah. that that to me is quite an interesting choice, uh, all things mm. considered. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm completely in agreement with it myself. But what do you yeah. think? Do you think it's the right choice? I'm not talking about not talking about tactically because obviously Steve Smith has shown that he's a good captain. He's got the yeah. ability to do it. I'm yeah. just concerned of uh, whether it is the right direction to go with. Yeah. Um, Given everything, yeah. right? Yeah. Like That's morally, right. E morally, ethically, we, we all talk about those things. Um, yeah. Look, I think given, given Australia's situation with this uh, Border Gavaskar trophy and my yeah. view, I just want to just make a side note, of course, I think I'm I remember telling this off air, um, mm. but we actually were given that we're, we're Sri Lanka supporters, and and there's a very very oh, slim. I knew, outside. I knew as soon as you said so, I was like, this is going to bring up Sri Lanka. Let's let's hear it. Hit me. We we well, we need Australia to win this last <laughs> Test match, right? Yeah. So that Lanka has a very minute chance of making it to that World Test Championship final. So yeah. if, if we if we if we align with that train of thought for a second, then look, I don't have a huge issue with with Steve Smith being captain. Um, mm. Just tactically speaking, uh, you know, um, strategically speaking, he he is pretty good candidate for captain. He's he's you know he won the last test quite convincingly, but then again, that pitch was absolutely diabolical. Um, yeah. It's a weird one for me, uh, Hasid, because you know I love Test cricket and I love supporting Lanka. So from that standpoint, um, you know, whatever can get Australia over the line, 
it, so be it. But I guess from a cricketing standpoint, um, I think there are better choices for captain for Australia. Um, you and I were once again chatting offline about who should have been the captain instead of Steve Smith, and I and I mentioned the name Usman Khawaja. Um, who's you did know, not think I'd hear that name? Uh, yeah, <laughs> we've spoken about with Australian captaincy. I thought it was and, an interesting point. Yeah, and I and I mentioned Usman Khawaja because you know he has a good captaincy record within domestic cricket and the Big Bash. Um, you know he's captain the Sydney Thunder and he's had a lot of good feedback from his teammates when it comes to captaincy. If you listen to some of those Sydney yeah. Thunder teammates, you know they they love the way Khawaja captains. He really backs his boys and yeah. stuff like that. He's had a bit of success with Queensland Bulls as well in domestic uh, Sheffield Shield. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was someone I thought would be would be pretty decent, um, mm. but you know Steve Smith is the the candidate they've gone with. Um, I think. Look, I don't, I don't, I'm not outwardly against it, right? Mm. Like if he's the captain, so be it. It doesn't make me feel upset. Um, if David Warner was the captain, I'd have an issue with that. Yeah, <laughs> I'd, I'd share. Off. Yeah, <laughs> I think most of Australia would probably have an issue yeah. with that. Um, but Steve Smith as the captain, I feel very lukewarm about it. Like, I'm it's like a car in neutral gear. It's like okay, it's like it's like okay, whatever. Um, okay, I feel like if if you're if if you're okay with it happening, yeah. then you're mm. probably then it's fine for you, right? Because mm. I think you can't really be on the fence with something like this. You're either like you either think okay. it's a bad idea or. You know that you can't you can't really be lukewarm in my opinion, right? Because okay, if you're fine, lukewarm, fine. that means yeah. you have no issues with him being a, like, you know, because I, I don't think anyone's going to have an issue with him having the actual ability to captain. Yeah, no one's going to argue with him there, right? So it's it yeah. completely it's just come down to like morally and ethically, is it the right thing yeah, to do? Yeah. Is yeah. he the right role model now for the kids and things like that? Yeah. So if you're on the fence, then you should be supportive of him. I think, right? Well. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll put, it, we'll put it this way. Look, I I don't have an issue with Steve Smith being captain. Yeah. I don't. Um. I think look, going back to ball tamping, all that. He did his time. He was quite remorseful. We all did saw that. On you know, we all saw that on television, right? Yeah. And uh, and since then, he's he's performed quite quite well, at least in the Test arena. You know, he's he's um you know he's he's been consistent. He's been performing. Um. He he didn't carry. You know, he didn't carry on to the media about how unfair things were he just got on with it if you notice a lot of the publicity was on warner but not steve smith so um yeah you know i, I feel like steve smith has returned to my good books in a way um because he kept quiet well he kept i mean keeping quiet's one thing but he just performed you know and people started to miss him people started to miss steve smith man and then he returned for the big bash and things like that so uh, Steve Smith has done a lot of groundwork to capture the trust and the admiration of his fans. Um, in my opinion, that's just my thoughts, and that's why we're here on a podcast to share that thoughts, a ideas. Hot that's a hot take. That's a hot take. A hot, take. Boy. It's a hot take, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a. That is a... Yeah. So, no, it's good. It's good. I think. Um, I don't necessarily agree, but yeah, no, that's fine. Um, but why think... don't you agree? I have to know. <laughs> no, I, we don't really need. I don't. I don't, I don't want to put him on blast, man. I think. Um, I think there's been a lot of like I guess sort of and this is you know walking on thin ice here you know yeah but I think there's been a lot of um I guess sort of blame being shifted from certain people when yes. I think at the end of the day um you yeah, know it's 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 how it's however you want to look at it for me yes. my personal opinion is if you if you're a captain of the side yeah. and certain certain things are being done um mm. you know about it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right and if you don't speak up you might as well be doing it yourself yeah all the boys anything that these boys do under instruction of whoever with your knowledge mm. you might as well be doing it yourself because yeah. you're knowingly let this letting these things happen that's my opinion i don't want to harp on it for too long because, yeah yeah I know. you know it's that so I, 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 know. I myself yeah. feel quite strongly in, the, in that way so for me yeah um i don't he, he's, a, he's a great captain he's a oh, great yeah. captain and that's yeah you know, and then he he's also very reminiscent of the of the brute, I guess, sort of captaincy style that Australia are renowned for. Yeah, certainly with the likes of um, Alan Border himself and Ricky mm. Ponting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and even Justin Langer as a coach, these guys are brute. Yeah, like just absolutely vicious and yes, did whatever it took. And uh, I think in regards to that kind of mentality, mm. uh, respectable. Oh. Um, but you know, certain things you just can't look past well i can't it's hard for me to mm -hmm. um but you know obviously as a sri lankan fan as you said no one we wish australia the best of luck we do want them yeah. to win we want them to um, win. 
I'm really interested to see how they how they will curate the pitch because it's been real it's been lopsided in the best way, I guess. Because you, you... Uh, yeah, look, it's it's always a hot topic when you come to India. It's always discussions yeah. around the pitch, around the pitch. And and Rohit Sharma actually put out a statement in the media and he was like, mm. Look, you know, other countries need to just like stop talking about this pitch nonsense in India. Like you're coming to our country to play cricket. This is how our pitches are, deal with it, you know. Australia still beat us in the third test, okay? So, like, you know, you can't just blame the pitch all the time. Oh, and God, and that's yeah. a good point he raised because if you, you know, going, if you want to talk about India, Australia, Border Gavaskar, mm. if you saw the way Australia batted in that last innings, chasing 75 in the third, in the fourth innings, that was a very different Australia. They actually looked like they knew how to play spin. Yeah. And that was straight up being positive. Just play positive. Yeah, that's what it was, yeah. yeah. They, right? they were confident in their shots and it showed, yeah. Exactly. So mm. all this nonsense about, oh, it's a really hard pitch, can't play spin, that's rubbish. If you if you just like adjust to the conditions, it's hard. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's like a walk in the park. Obviously, there was a lot of defensive you know, prods and, and there were lots of times that looked like the Aussie batters are getting out. But if you wait for that bad ball, which will come, and put yeah. that away every time, the Indian bowlers, they get, they get really confused. You know, uh, yeah. uh, Ravid, uh, you know, Ashwin was going at 4.47 runs per over in mm. that chase. Mm. And that pitch had, and, and day three or day, whatever day it was, the pitch had deteriorated worse at that point. Yeah. So you're course, telling yeah. me the pitch is now worse and now you're scoring better? So what does that mean? It's not a case of the pitch, it's that you change your mindset and that it positively. Yeah. So, For sure. Um, and I think what happens as well is when you start like, I guess, sort of like canoodling the ball and, and just scoring at a much lower rate, you're obviously facing a lot more mm. balls to score the same mm. amount of runs. And obviously, then you're giving mm. the bowler more, way more opportunity to to strike. You're giving him confidence. You're giving him the confidence to bowl maybe a, a you know a different like, loop one up every now and again. You know what I mean? You're giving yeah. the op- the mm. bowler, I guess, sort of freedom, like you know, creative yeah. agency in, in how he would bowl because yes, he's not scared of getting hit, and yeah. you just and 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 you're just sort of just like backing yourself into a corner. So it's really yeah. good to see Australia come out in the second knock and um second dig and play in the positive fashion that we know that they play down under yes and you know i, th- I think it, it's definitely just like a, it was a mentality thing so i think mm. this next test is going to be an absolute cracker um the curator I'm I'm... is going to be absolutely i don't know he's going to get a scolding one way or another i think but um it's good it's gonna be hot hot cricket can't wait well once again as you know being the cricket nerd i am i keep up with all the articles and i read an article and, and for the fourth test they still haven't actually decided on which pitch they're going to use so okay. there's actually there's two pitches that they're preparing in tandem, <laughs> and they oh, haven't really? decided which one's gonna be uh, what they're gonna use for the actual for the actual day. So I reckon they'll be getting a, once again a Jadu a... and Ashwin's po- like opinion, and then whatever yeah. they want to go with, they're gonna go with that one. <laughs> I reckon that's, what, mi- that's yeah, yeah. That's in, what gonna go with. Um, <laughs> situation. Um, so there's actually two pitches that they're looking at. So. Mm. That's interesting. I mean, look, this is test cricket in India. I mean, look, India is a very hard place to actually win in in test cricket. You know, not even I don't think even Sri Lanka has defeated India in a test match. Not not even and, Sri Lanka. Well, I, I say that I say that, and I, and I got some mates who will listen in. And they'll be like, "Oh, look at him! Look at him putting Lanka on a pedestal." Yeah, I, I say oh, this, I, I'm one of those mates, man. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> I say this because Sri Lanka has very similar conditions to India when it comes to spin and, and things like that. And yet, yep. with Murugan and Ranganaherat at the peak of their powers, we could still never defeat India in a Test match, right? So, um, you know, it's more than just like a, a pitch thing. It's a mental thing. It's a psychological thing. Um, yep. And that's the why, atmosphere you know, that's as why, well. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's why Bay thirteen is better. The MCG times that by like hundred and fifty. <laughs> you've got like any Indian ground at any given time. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. <laughs> I read this really cool. I read this really cool um, article, and apparently, um, I think it was Nathan Lyon. He said, "There's no better feeling when you're playing cricket in India, and the crowd goes silent when you like." <laughs> That's as good as you're gonna get. I reckon. That's, <laughs> he was like, "He's like, I live for that silence." <laughs> All right. That's what you know. You're, you're doing well as the opposition when the crowd is like Honestly. shouting up. Um, but look, there you go, I guess. But uh, look, yeah. I'm, I'm keen for this fourth test. I think there's a lot of positive that Australia could take out of that test in terms of just, uh, you know, batting, even bowling as well. Nathan Lyon finally found his groove. Yes. And I think he picked up eight or nine wickets for the for the game. Um, and I think he's 
creeping up in that wickets tally as well. He's approaching 500 test wickets. Like, who would have thought? Nathan Lyon of all people. Kira himself. (laughs) I'll be honest. I I did not rate Nathan Lyon for a solid five years. Like, I just... I I didn't think he was anything special. He was just this bolding guy, lanky dude that just rolled his arm over. That wasn't really necessary, young man. I don't know why you had to bring up his... (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm just saying, like... He didn't come across as like he didn't have that like you know when Shane Warne came on the scene you know he had that star quality about him. Oh, it's because right? he had a full head of hair because he had that Ashley Martin well, going I'm, on, huh? Well, well, you know, if Nathan <laughs> Lyon wants to make it down to Ashley Martin, you never know. But look, oh, what really? I'm saying is Nathan Lyon is. Um, I'm going to make a really weird comparison now, and you're going to hate me for making this comparison. Like, uh, I know to I'm going to hit me. Okay, <laughs> he's used to what he says. So like, it's not my first radio Nathan Lyon's, you, mate. Nathan Lyon's one of those cricketers that sort of got better through hard work and like getting better over time and uh, a bloke that comes to my mind is uh you're not gonna believe this but sangakara was of a similar caliber sangakara in his early days do you remember that sangakara yeah. was such an average cricketer when he first started i there were times where we even thought why is sangakara even playing for lanka like why is he even here um yeah. and he sort of became one of the great modern day greats of all time yeah and then in a similar kind of category with the bowling side of things. He still has a way to go, in my opinion, but he's getting there. Who Nathan um, Lyon's got a way to go now? Not as in a way to go in the sense that, like, to, to be where Sangakara finished up, batting-wise... Oh, come on, man. You can't put them in the same bracket. They're, they're not in the what same. What I'm saying... Well, yeah, no, but what I'm saying is he's, he's had that similar traje- trajectory where he's become progressively better with, with, with time. So, so yeah. look, I, you know, I, I actually... I, I really like watching Nathan Lyon bowl now. That's That's the thing. I used to not like watching him bowl. Now I can watch Nathan Lyon bowl like five overs, and if it's all maiden, I'll still be watching. Like it'll be <laughs> exciting. I don't know that, there was that. You know that ball he got to dismiss Pujara with that big, big spinning off break. Like yeah, really I mean that was a poor spun, shot like, from Pujara. Completely it was, missed it. It was, um, but yeah. you know it's it's good to see. That was Nathan with a brand Lyon, new really. pill as well. That was quite a shiny pill that he had. Uh, it was yeah, shiny, it was. but I reckon it was probably about fifteen odd overs old. I'm not. Yeah, fifteen. Remember. That's still fresh, mate. Yeah. Come on. He's not an opener. I've had, had a few scouts, but still, he's a big, big turf. <laughs> I love, I love seeing a, I love, I love seeing a spinner get a good turn, good spin. It's, yeah, uh, it's always honestly, good I, I do remember that ball. He made Pujara look an, an utter mess, which yeah. is rare. But I, I, but, I can understand. Yeah. Um, um, I was just going to say, I, I'm pretty sure Pujara's face, like Nathan Lyon, like it was like some kind of record, or it was some kind of figure being thrown out. And um, yeah. Nathan Lyon had taken had taken Pujara's wicket like a lot. It was like I can't. Yeah, remember, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to put a number out there, but it was a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think mm. it was like an, yeah. But the, Nathan Lyon is he's 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 on a good run. The kid that I'm really excited for is uh, obviously Todd Murphy. Um, he's actually dismissed Virat Kohli three times now. I saw this really cool stat. Like apparently Virat Kohli is averaging 18 against Todd Murphy, <laughs> and I saw. <laughs> And I was, so right now, oh, all come out on Instagram. Top was really, and he'd have he'd have like a pretty good uh, accolade on his resume. He'd be like the greatest loss, dude. There was like this really awesome, the uh, really loss, hilarious really. meme I saw, and well, no, but there was like this meme I saw where there was like a picture of like a, a dad, but yeah. it had been taken out, and it's like Todd Murphy's <laughs> face there, and and it was like cradling a baby, and they put Brad Collie's face there. Oh my god, <laughs> so that is such Todd that is such is an officially... Indian style meme, dude. Yeah, is it not? <laughs> so it's like Todd, it's like Todd Murphy, official father of Vera Kohli. Yeah, dude, that's such, that is such an Indian style meme. <laughs> uh, oh uh, man! But I saw that and I was like, yeah, it begins. But I'm, I'm honestly excited to see how Todd Murphy goes. Um, he's really, he's really done well. Yes. Even when it's in those really bad situations, he's really come up. And uh, I'm keen to see how this youngster goes. He's going to have a long career. Um, really nice, simple, uncomplicated offspin action. Just does the basics right, and uh, yeah, if him and Lyon can, you know, do a demolition job again, then it shows a good chance. Exactly, for sure. Mm. Um, mm. Before we get too stuck into uh, the test, the test format, <laughs> no one, I want to slide yeah. on over to the T20, the T20 arena, the WPL kicked off last week. We've had yep. a few games, and I have been in love with these games. They've been absolute cracker. Yeah, right. Uh, the first mm. game we saw score two hundred plus, absolutely incredible. Uh, Mumbai yeah. Indians have proven to be the team to beat. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They absolutely ab- abolished the Gujarat Giants, 
207 for five batting first yes. the bowled out the good red giants for 64 a measly 64 yeah. and <laughs> you know what, what like yeah i have no idea but um harman pre core i had a look at that game and i've never seen in recent times harman pre core play such an elegant classy knock with such a crazy yeah, right. strike rate 65 of 30 14 fours and most of these fours were along the carpet through like backward point through point cover drive yeah. such class yeah. such elegance and i hadn't seen that in a long time in harman uh, harman preet a lot of people were saying that you mm -hmm. know her time was up because obviously she's in the twilight uh stages of her career mm -hmm. um but you know mm -hmm. what she has an eye and she has so much more to give um mm -hmm. i'm not sure have you seen any of the games that have uh that have been played recently i've seen i've seen i've seen bits and pieces but these uh these games happen so late and i'm fast becoming an old man and uh i just i'm i'm i'm, I'm like dead dead asleep at that point but um yeah i have been keeping up with scores i've been keeping up with scores and things like that and yes the mumbai indians have an absolutely power pa power packed team um you look at that top order and and it's just it's just, it's it's hot, just batting hot. five power the whole way yep yeah you've got the west indian uh hayley matthews and england's in that silver brunt then you got harman pre court at number four there pretty solid bat number four <laughs> you got amelia kerr and then even even puja vastrika can can smack a few no she um, can yeah she's so, very handy so uh you know and we saw that i mean ashley gardner bowling four mm -hmm. overs for 38 runs like getting the treatment i didn't see that happen too often yeah you pretty, pretty accurate <laughs> right yeah yeah <laughs> they're the team um, to be just like look, in the men's arena during that golden era with uh mahela jai warden as head coach oh, looks like oh, yeah, yeah my women are not messing around as well it's good who, to see who is a, who is a mumbai india who is a mumbai india women's coach actually i'm actually curious to know now i'm not sure i was watching the wpl auction i was watching the auction and mahela jai warden was there so he definitely has oh, yes. he's pulling a few strings in with with something certainly with the picking of players yeah. and he's done a great job obviously but I'm, yeah. I'm not really sure who the who the coaching staff is. Like, you sometimes see the coaches come and and chat during like the the breaks and stuff. Um, but yeah. honestly, I don't really know two of these too much of these guys. So um, it's good. Hopefully, the next couple of seasons they'll be they'll be regular faces and we'll know them. But for now, I'm not too sure. Yeah. Um, just, had, just had a look mm. now. So they hang on. So their coach is actually the former England women's team captain, yep. uh, Charlotte Edwards. Okay. Choice. Oh, and there was also a Jul also a Jilan Goswami as a, a team. Yeah, she, yeah, she's coach, there. So. Yeah, you always see Goswami, mm -hmm. and then also for I think for Gujarat, um, Matali Raj is a consultant, and so perhaps Goswami is a consultant for MI. Um, yeah, they definitely yeah. have some high class players, like ex players around. I just don't know what their role is. I guess mm -hmm. yeah, but I know um, mm -hmm. Raj is a consultant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, well, um, that's 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 pretty good. It is um, good. I mean, I'm, given the way how given mm. though Harman Preet Kaur's been playing you think she was like coached by Rahul Dravid or or some you oh, know, technician of the game <laughs> yeah she's 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 very very similar to Dravid actually her drives and stuff mm. it's very very yeah mm -hmm. very very pleasing um on the eyes on the eye. um someone else who's quite pleasing on the eyes as well good segue here we it's, go uh Smriti Mandana oh. the captain <laughs> of the Royal Challengers of Bangalore um that was a good adding, right? hey um i was gonna say she's uh so she is the most expensive player in the wpl i think she got picked up for um i think it was 3.8 crore or something something monstrous um and she's also been given the captaincy position for the side and uh, unfortunately she's been absolutely clattered with her girls yes uh, two out of two games that they've played first game mm -hmm lost to the Delhi Capitals by 60 runs and then yeah. last night lost to Mumbai by nine mm -hmm. wickets 45 balls and the total that they scored wasn't actually that bad either but Hayley Matthews yeah. just went on an absolute tear um yeah. so I, and I think there was also oh and the, and the person who said it I can't remember so forgive me but there was a there was a female I think she's in the commentary box as well saying that she wanted more Indian females to be captains of these WPL teams because I know there's a few Australian girls mm. that have gotten captaincy yeah. positions, and yeah. I guess it's um, yeah. it begs the question because when when I thought when I heard that and I, and I was thinking about it, you know these 
being the being the captain of India, I feel like is a is an easier job than being a captain of a WPL mm. team because the Indian okay. side uh, okay. go on absolutely incredible, right? Right, and, you, and you're always going to have like really good senior players around, right? So when you come mm. to the WPL teams, what happens is these good senior Indian players they are spread across the teams, and not only that, you're pretty much playing against the cream of the crop of the entire cricketing world. Yeah. As far as females yeah. are concerned. So you don't get to play mm. against, say, like, you know, sometimes these Indian girls play against like Thailand and, you know, Sri Lanka yes. and, you know, some yeah. of these teams that are not collectively strong. They've got a few good players here and there. Whereas when you mm. come into the WPL, you're playing against mm -hmm. the cream of the crop. You know, you're not going to be playing subpar players yeah. in your WPL team, right? So that's why I think Smriti Mandana Correct. is, yeah. uh, is, you know, I had a look at her game first up. Uh, in, in the first game, and I, was, I think she made she dropped the ball with the bowling decisions, the bowling choices, the fielding placement. Um, so it was mm. a little bit disappointing. Obviously, she's quite fresh into the gig, and you know we're definitely yet to see what she can what she can give. But I think there's a lot of pressure yeah. there, and on top of the fact with the her being the most expensive player as well, I think there's a lot riding on her shoulders. But what are your mm. thoughts on I guess sort of um, pushing for Indian female captains to? To be in the WPL team, and we've seen the likes of like Faf Duplessis be absolutely amazing for you know the, the men's yeah. side uh, that he was in. But what do you what do you mm -hmm. what do you think, Nuan? Oh, look, absolutely. I mean, you know, it, Indian Indian let Indian women make great leaders uh, when it comes to captaincy. Um, I just think I just think Shmithi Mandana is not captaincy material. Um, she gives me like very kind of classic Tendulkar kind of vibes in the sense that she's a good she's a good run machine. As we, we yep. both know, she's a very elegant, very talented batter. But captaincy is a is a, a, a peculiar art, and yes. sometimes you can be a, a highly talented player in your respective department of the game, be a batting or bowling. But captaincy, it's not always the best player that needs to be captain. It's got to be someone that understands people really well. And exactly right. The fact that Shmita uh, Mandana, in my opinion, has one of the best teams at her disposal for this uh, WPL, and is losing so emphatically. Yeah. Um, it shows that she's not really someone who's good at getting a team together. Um, you know, you mentioned offline that you know some of the bowling changes she was making was were a bit erratic. Um, it yeah, seemed like she was just like panicking and just and going through the motions and trying to just pick whoever instead of really That's thinking right. about how can I you know how can I plug the runs, who's fresh, who's you know who's got the right sort of skills that I need. I mean, I'm looking at this with all challenges Bangalore squad, the women's squad, and it's they've got some. They've got. It's elite, yeah, hundred percent. They've got obviously Smriti as captain. They've got Sophie Devine um, from New Zealand, um, Risha Gosh, you know, another fantastic player. Obviously, the the one and only uh, Elise Perry and Renika Singh, Megan Schutt, excellent fast bowler. Heather Knight, even Dane, yeah, Heather Knight as well, and even uh, Dane uh, Van Niekerk from from uh, South Africa. Like, that's like the top like six. Did elite. you say Megan Schutt as well? I did mention Vegas shoot, yeah. Yeah, I did. I did mention it. Uh, crazy, uh, crazy forward. team, man. And to be honest, looking at the face of it, you would pick Sophie Devine to be your captain. She is. Yeah, the, she is say. the person to go to. She has yeah, an, like a really good record with New Zealand. She's a very, very senior mm. player. Absolute mm. menace with the bat and the ball. Um, her bowling has mm. not been the best, uh, thus far. But she is certainly an absolute force. Um, yeah. So yeah, I I agree with you. Um, but also maybe it's something to. That Smriti needs to have a chat with the consultant. You know, we are still mm. very, very fresh into the series or the season. Yeah. Sorry, um, yeah. it might be something that she, it might be just a few things that she needs to just pick up, and you know, it'll pay heavy dividends really soon. But I thought that was an mm -hmm. interesting point to make. Yeah, maybe there's a, a bit of extra pressure in choosing in choosing him her to be captain. Yeah, because she's the most mm. expensive. Yeah, I think we also got to understand that like this is pretty. This is like it's a de debut season, right? So yep. it's going to be a concept that's going to take, it's going to be a, a, a format of the game. It's going to take some time to evolve, you know. Everyone's sort of feeling their way through it, okay. So the fact that, you know, the Royal Challengers are losing, I think they've lost two matches now. Yep, yeah, they've lost have. two from two. You know, it doesn't mean that suddenly these girls are terrible at cricket or the fact that, you know, Smithy is uh, a, an average cricketer. It's just that this is new no. for everyone, you know. It is, yeah. And you're going to have, you, you'll clearly have one team that, just does better than everyone because they don't have a different approach to the game. Like I think mm -hmm. we've been seeing the deck and charges women team 
you know, they don't have, I don't think that they don't have one of the strongest sides either, but because I guess their players, uh, maybe they don't have the best players, but because their, pay, their players are earning less, those mm. players play with a lot more freedom because it's like, well, you know, no one's really banking on me to be successful. <laughs> so I can go out there with like, I can take more risks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, whereas a player yeah. like Schmithy, she's aware, she, you know, she's aware that she's one of the highest played, the highest paid, uh, players in this tournament, so maybe that might play in her mind like, oh, I have to perform, I've got to do this, and, yeah. that, and that stress can sometimes, you know, be overwhelming. Um, no, but it's, this is good for cricket, though. I think the women's game definitely needs something like this. It's going to encourage more leagues like this to pop up, and I just hope it doesn't infiltrate cricket too much. But it's been a good, it's a, it's a, it's a good concept so far. No, for sure. Also, I think, um, I think you meant De Delhi Capitals, uh, not Deccan Chargers. Um, oh, is it Delhi Capitals? Yeah. Oh dear! I mean, I remember the old Deccan Charges. Deccan Charges have been to... long gone. I think Herschel Gibbs they playing were... for the Deccan Charges a long time ago. I remember ago. Gilchrist as captain of the Deccan. Yeah, you are. Yeah, my, this my is like apologies. 2008, 2009. I'm surprised you remember. Yeah, see, I'm still, I'm, I'm one of those people, man. Yeah, um... you are. You're, a, you're a soon to be Ashley <laughs> Martin. That's what you are. You're a Nathan Lyon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's Ashley what you are, Martin. man. You're an old fella. Goodness me. <laughs> and. Uh... Um, yeah, there it is. But uh, one thing yeah. that I want to just make mention of, actually, really um, and really interesting topic. We are running quite late. Uh, we're quite long into this mm. episode. Nuan, yeah. um, the game before last, I believe it was, a new a new thing sprouted in the WPL. Something that we've not seen before in the cricketing world. Something super interesting. Something super fascinating. Revolutionary, you might say. Right. We actually saw a DRS decision for a above the way snowball being asked by from the batsman um and then i think also last night there was one that was being called for for a uh a wide as well um now i'm not too sure what your thoughts are on that but i thought it was a pretty interesting thing to start implementing in the wpl i mm -hmm. think they've also announced that they're going to be utilizing that in the ipl as well um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i am actually I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I think it's something that should be used hmm. sparsely, maybe just in the T20 format. You know, we, we've already seen the likes of, say, hmm. like like free hits and things like that. They've not transcended into the test arena, right? That We've got them in ODIs yeah. and T20s. Perhaps this DRS for extras might be used, um, I guess, sort of as like some sprinkles that might be utilizing the T20 format. What do you think? So, so uh, reviewing, reviewing, so having like a, a DRS for wides and no balls, is that what you're referring to? Extras, yeah. yeah. Extras, yeah. And, and, and is, so is that like wickets and extras as like, so for example, do you get three, do you get three bad reviews for wickets and three bad reviews for the extras or is it I don't, just I don't three bad reviews so. for anything? I think it would just, it should just be reviewed. So, you know, if, if you have to sort of like weigh up whether it's worth using it or not, right? Sometimes if you've got wickets in hand and you're, you and you're chasing, like, yeah. let, let me paint a scenario for you. You're chasing four off three balls, right? Yeah. You've got five yeah. wickets in hand, you're five down, yeah. last over, right? Uh, Vastrika bowls one, it goes close to your pads down the leg side. Umpire reckons it's hit the pad. You are absolutely yeah, adamant right. that it hasn't hit the pad. Replay shows it hasn't hit the pad. You lose the mm. game by a run, right? Situations like that, I think it's super advantageous to get the right decision out there. Um, human error is something that's always going to be evident, but I don't think yeah. that game should be won and lost on the back of a human error, something like that, right? Oh, so that's a good. That's a see. That's a good that's argument you point out there. Yeah, I see. It's like this, right? A good umpire should be able to pick up on those things, and mistakes happen. At the same time, I I think it's a bit unnecessary, only because like in those crunch situations, sure, but like. Wides and extras are—they—they they are hundred percent bowler errors. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. if you're gonna—if you're gonna bowl down leg side, if you're gonna bowl a waist high full toss, right? Like that's—that's that's on you as a bowler, right? Um, yep. It's your mistake, and if you want to review your mistake, then like you know, I—I I think it's—I'm a bit of a traditionalist. I don't think it's necessary. Um, a review system for wickets, 100%. I'm all for that because with wickets, there's a sense of uh, there's a sense of finality with those three checks that have to go through to determine dismissal, right? 
whether it's in line, you know, on the stumps and where it was pitched out. With with extras, there's a lot of ambiguity. That's just with LBWs, by the way. That's not all wickets. Right. Right, right. sure. But like, so let's, let's, right. let's make that clear. True. But, but when it comes to an extras, right, for example, like a wide or a no ball, a waist high no ball, yep. there's a lot of, there is ambiguity around who determines that, right? Because from for one umpire, for example, you might receive like a waist high ball. One umpire might think, oh, no, that's fine. It was only just just under the waist. The other yep. umpire might be like, no, no, it's above the waist, right? And then when you have these TV uh, reviews of this, it, it again shows an ambiguity because then you got to argue, did it hit the batsman here or here? Or like, what? at what point are we calling it a, a, a no ball? Right? There's, there's a lot of... We, there's we've a lot already of great... got something similar in place with Hawkeye, no one. We can use the same technology from the side. We can we can get it we can get it accurate. We can, you can say the same arguments with LBWs, right? I yeah. I think I think the technology is there. Let's use it. It is there, but I feel like it, I feel like there's a sense of necessity here, and I feel like if we use a, a review system for extras, there's going to be a lot of situations where it's going to be umpires' call. That's just what I believe. Okay. Um, and then it and then it just wastes so how time. About, how about it, this then? Okay, because obviously this is still quite new. You only get the three reviews anyway, right? Yeah. How about for I mean, and you, it, yeah, I mean, you can't really, you can't really split these decisions up as well. But I was, no. I was going to say perhaps if it's if it's for a review for a an extra, if it's umpire's review, you lose a review instead of just retaining it. So there's more at stake. But if you, so are, you know, okay, so there's no, you know, traditionally there's you no, would retain the yeah, review. Yeah, you retain retain the review. So right? you say you outright lose it. I think yeah. it's unnecessary, Hazid, because look, you'd have to be a, a ridiculously poor umpire if you can't call a wide or a no ball or whatever. It happens, like, I don't know. man. It's, it happens. It, it happens. It happens. Fine, but I think the 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 frequency of poor decisions for extras is far yep. less than the the frequency for poor decisions when it comes to a wicket, right? Correct. Um, because you got the, there's an emotional standpoint. You've got a bowler screaming in your face, appealing. Um, you've got like, you know, obviously games are, you know, the pivotal moments of a cricket match are determined by wickets, you know, dismissals, right? And I just feel that although it's good to have a DRS in place for the extras, I just think it, it doesn't overall affect the outcome of the game as much as wickets. Um, and my, my final argument to that point is it's quite easy to call a wide and no ball. Like you don't need to consult technology all the time. You have you'd have to be a really, really, really bad umpire if you can't determine a standard wide or a standard no ball. Um, that's no, just how I look at it. Like if it just flicked the pad, or they thought they flicked the pad, because those actually happen. You see them yeah, every do. couple of games. They right? do. They, they do. And if that happens, you don't, you don't need to have this full blown out DRS system for that. Just just put your hand up and be like, hey, I want to review that. Just just cause. Like the way Coley did in that game against Pakistan in the World Cup. See, I, I right? don't agree I don't agree with that, dude, because that's if it was anyone else, that wouldn't have happened. Uh, my well, opinion. I mean but you see that that kind of informal review process, like other countries have done it. Those were, Mahila, Mahila did that once in that test. Also, match just, against, be, uh, just before you go on, we, we for those of you that are listening. We're talking about the, I guess, sort of the, the semi-controversial no waist high no ball with uh, Virat Kohli and um, who was yeah. the bowler? Was it? Was it? Uh... Uh, I think it was um, Muhammad uh, Harris. Har- Harris Ralph. Harris Ralph. Harris Ralph. In Harris the Ralph semi-final of the T20 World Cup yeah. in Australia. Um, yeah. Mid last year. No, it wasn't. A, it wasn't a, a semi final. It was one of the qualifying it wasn't a semi-final. games. But still, it was oh, it contra- was to get into the semi final. It was a yeah, must yeah, win yeah, game, yeah, yeah, yeah. regardless. Yeah. But what I'm saying right. is when it comes to extras, when it comes to extras and things like that, you can always call for the informal review of anything. There's even a time, remember that test match back in 2015? We all we all joke about it when um Mahila edged the catch to Clark and Clark's like, Mahila, 100%, 100% I caught that, right? And, and what, did, still what did Mahila say? That. What did Mahila say, no one? Like, <laughs> he's like, I do work, man, I do work. Just kill, <laughs> okay, just wait. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> My point is, like, when it comes to things like that, I don't think there needs to be a review system in place. You can just put okay. your hand up and be like, "Hey, I just, I just want to check that," and then and just go but from then, there. The but technology's then, there. But then, then the onus yeah. falls on the particular umpire on the day whether they choose to actually go ahead with checking it or not, or should there be a blanket rule if the batsman asks for something to get checked, it gets checked. Uh, I'm not sure about blanket rule. I think, in my opinion, these things are 
so minute and so you think they're minute like, they happen rare. more often than they they happen they happen semi frequently and you'd hate to lose a game on the back of a decision like this well when those when when those things happen right someone needs to stand up and be like hey i want to review that leg side wide i want to review that leg by that you called and 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 go from there i just i just don't think there needs to be a review system in place and counting reviews because what that does that, that takes time away from the game the game drags on it's just you know it's not fun for everyone but i also see your side of the argument your argument's also quite strong i do i do i do acknowledge that um where i sort of my standpoint is just the necessity and the frequency of such occurrences is it necessary to go to that extent to review them that's all yeah and um that's fair tell you what it's a it's a, it's a fairly balanced debate there i'd say yeah um, i'm actually <laughs> super happy that something like this happened because yeah. i have thought about it before um because yeah. like you know when you when you think about batting and stuff like that and you think about like a wide that you think was obviously wide it wasn't called and you see you see mm. that all happen a lot right yeah you see mm. it happen a lot you see these a batsman might leave a ball because yeah. they think it's a wide and it doesn't get caught a wide and it's the last over second last over that happens quite frequently and you're like mm. man like can i get someone else to have a look at that please because i think that's a wide but yeah, you would yeah, never yeah. ask the main yeah. umpire like hey man can you get can you check that like it doesn't happen so mm. for us to have an official oh, okay. way to do this yeah. i think it's uh it's a conversation worth yeah. having it'd be really interesting to see how it plays out in the wpl yeah and in the ipl I think we've got something here. I, I don't know. Yeah, we're, we're running out of time, and I'll definitely do a bit more <laughs> reading on it. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's a good discussion to have in, in regards to that whether there should be a review some extras. I think that's that's the topic where we're looking at here. But uh, but no, good chat, Hasid. It we're, is a link. These episodes are getting longer and longer now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we definitely apologize. I think this episode is about forty-five minutes or so. So it's a fat yeah. one. Hopefully, you guys can split this across your drive to work or something. In the yeah. following days, um, if you haven't 100%. been able to catch this live, but yeah. um, I think we will wrap it up right here. No one, do you have any last words before we say bye to our folks uh, until next no, week? No, I'm, I'm just, I'm keen for this last test match to start in the Border Gavaskar Trophy. I'll be keeping a keen eye on that, hoping Australia wins um, to square the series. But uh, yeah. no, good chats as always, Hasit. Uh, it's good that uh, we can finally uh, have a chat um on a day where we typically have cricket training put it that way <laughs> you know that's, that's right <laughs> but yeah good chat good chat as always thanks for having me definitely all right guys we'll see you all next week have a lovely week stay safe ciao goodbye see you guys bye